In this video we're going to learn about the product rule for counting. As always there are exam questions in this video's description that you can try on this topic afterwards. The specification says that you need to know and understand that if there are x ways to do task 1 and y ways to do task 2 then there are x y ways to do both tasks in sequence. The reason this is called the product rule is because you multiply x and y together to get x y. Let's have a look at what this means in context. Imagine you were buying a new t-shirt, and there were three sizes, the one here which is medium, you could also buy it in large, and you could also buy it in small. You could also buy it in a variety of colours, so your choices are green, red, blue and yellow. And you also have a choice of six different logos to go on the front of the t-shirt, so you have a football, dinosaur, flower, rainbow, star or planet. So one such example could be a large blue t-shirt with a football on it or it could be a small yellow t-shirt with a rainbow on it. Now the question is how many different possible t-shirts are there that you could create? This is where we use the product rule for counting. So there are three ways to choose the size of the t-shirt. There are four ways to choose the color, and then there are six ways to choose the logo. So we just multiply these together, three times four times six, which gives you 72 possible shirts. You can see all of these visually here, we've got all of the large ones, then the medium ones, then the small ones, and they're also grouped by colour so it's easier to see we've not missed one. Imagine now that you are creating a revision timetable. You've identified five subjects that you want to revise, they're maths, English, science, history and geography, and you've picked four hours that you want to revise, you want to revise at 1pm, 2pm, 3pm, and 4pm. So we want to consider how many different possibilities there are for creating this revision timetable. So you could choose at 1pm maths, then at 2pm science, 3pm geography, and 4pm English. That's one such example. But of course you could also repeat subjects. You could have history, then geography, and then history again, and then finish with science for example. Or you could even just choose maths for all of the slots. So how many ways are there? Well for the first hour at 1pm there's 5 different possibilities. For the second hour there's also 5 possibilities. The third hour 5 possibilities again and the fourth hour 5 again. So there are 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 which is 625 ways of creating this revision timetable. Now what if we restricted it and said actually you can't revise the same subject more than once so there's no repetition. Then when you pick your first subject, let's say we go for English, we need to cross it out. So for the second subject, we now have four choices, not five. Let's say we chose maths, we would cross that out. And then the next subject, there's only three choices now. Let's say we pick history, we cross that out. And the final subject, there's now only two choices. Well, let's imagine we pick geography. So how many possible combinations are there now? Well, in this case, there were five choices for the first hour. But once we crossed out one of them, there was only four for the next one. So it's times 4, and then we crossed out another one, so there's only 3 left, so times 3, and then times 2. So 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 gives you only 120 possible ways. So if the question does or doesn't have repetition, that can affect the answer. You need to watch out for the wording of the question in particular. It's very common for exam questions to be about numbers. So let's have a look at some of those examples. How many 3-digit numbers are there? When I have a question like this, I like to draw a line to represent each one of the digits. So since it's a three digit number, I'll draw three lines. Then I consider how many ways there are of selecting each of the digits. So for this one, for a three digit number, the first digit must be a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. It obviously can't be a zero, or it would actually be a two digit number. So there are nine ways of selecting the first number. For the second digit, I could have any of the numbers from zero to nine. So that's actually 10 numbers, so I times 10, and it's exactly the same for the last digit. It could be any number from 0 to 9, so that's 10 numbers, so I times by 10. So 9 times 10 times 10 means there are 900 possible 3-digit numbers. What about now if we said how many 3-digit even numbers are there? Well it starts very similar, we'll draw a line for each of the digits. The first number could be any number from 1 to 9, so that's 9 numbers. The second number could be any number again, so 0 to 9 is 10 numbers, but the final one needs to be restricted to ones that give us an even number. 
If it's an even number, it must end in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. So there's only 5 numbers there, so we times by 5. 9 times 10 times 5 gives you 450 possible numbers. In this question, the number needs to not only be a multiple of 5, but also less than 700. So again, we draw our three lines. The first digit needs to be one of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. It can't be 7, 8, or 9, else the number would be greater than 700. So there are six possibilities, so we'll start with a 6. The middle digit could be any digit again, so from 0 to 9, that's 10 digits. Now the final digit. We need to make sure this number is a multiple of 5. All multiples of 5 end in either a 0 or a 5, so there are only two possibilities for the final digit. So 6 times 10 times 2 is 120. I'll now show you three slightly harder questions. So we've got some digits here, 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, and 9. And the question says, using only the digits above, with no repetition, and no repetition is important here, once we've used the number we can't use it again, how many integers can be made that are between 200,000 and 900,000? So if the numbers are between 200 and 900,000, they must have six digits, so let's draw six lines. Now the first digit is quite important for this question, because we need to be between 200,000 and 900,000. So looking at the choice of digits we have, it must be a 2, 3, 5, or 7. Don't fall into a trap here, it can't be a 9. If we selected 9 for the first digit, then it would be greater than 900,000, because all of the other digits are non-zero. So there are four choices for the first digit, so let's put a 4 down. Now for the remaining digits, it doesn't actually matter what we choose, it will now be between 200,000 and 900,000, as long as we start with one of those four. But remember there's no repetition, so once you've chosen a number you can't choose it again. So we've already chosen a number for the first digit, so for the next digit there's only 5 numbers left to choose from. So we'll put times 5, and now we've chosen 2 digits so there's only 4 left, so times 4. And now we've chosen 3 digits, so there's only 3 left to choose from, so times 3. And now we've chosen 4, so there's only 2 left, so times 2. And now we've chosen 5, so there's only 1 left to choose from, so times 1. So we do 4 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and that gives us 480. In this question, we've got the same digits to choose from, and no repetition again, but we want an even number that's above 500,000. So if we're above 500,000 again, it will have 6 digits, so let's draw 6 lines. Now if we're above 500,000, the first digit must be one of the 5, 7, or 9. So there's three ways of choosing the first digit, so let's write down a 3. And if it's an even number, then the final digit must be a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. Now looking at the digits we have to choose from, there's only one there that fits that, that's the number 2. So there's only one way of choosing the last digit, so we'll put a times 1 in there. Now we've selected two digits already here, we've selected the final digit, that's the 2, so we'll cross that out, we can't use that again, and we've used one of the 5, 7, or 9. We don't know which one, it doesn't actually matter, but we pick one of those numbers already. So we've selected two digits from our list, that means there are four digits left. Now those four digits could go anywhere in the remaining spaces to fit the criteria, so there are four digits to choose from for this number, but if we selected that one, there's now three digits for the next number, and then two digits for the next number, and finally one digit for this last number. So we need to do three times four times three times two times one times one, which gets you 48. And now the final question, which is one of the most tricky types you can get. So we've got the same digits, and again no repetition, but we want the final number to be greater than 30,000. This time there are two cases we need to look at. We could have a 5 digit number that's greater than 30,000, but it also could be a 6 digit number. Let's look at 6 digit numbers first. So we'll draw 6 lines. Now all 6 digit numbers are greater than 30,000, so we could select any of the digits for the first digit. So all 6. Once we've selected one of them though, there's only 5 for the next digit, and then 4, and 3, and 2, and 1. So there are 720 ways of choosing a 6 digit number that's greater than 30,000. But we also need to look at the 5 digit numbers. Now 5 digit numbers are a little more complicated, because some 5 digit numbers are less than 30,000. If we're above 30,000 using the numbers we've got, the first digit must be a 3, 5, 7, or 9. So there are 4 of those, so we'll put a 4 down. Now for the remaining digits we could choose anything apart from one digit that we've already selected. So there were 5 digits left, so times 5, times 4, times 3, and times 2. And if you do this, you end up with 480. 
So there are 720 ways for six digit numbers, 480 ways for five digit numbers. We add those together and you'll get 1,200 possible ways. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Check out the exam questions that are in the description below. Check out the video I think you should watch next and also subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.